Hey there, welcome to Gyroscope Farm and the Traveling Homesteader. I'm Kathy, and this channel we talk about kind of some farming things and how to become more self-reliant. But today's topic is about farming a little bit. <laughs> I'm actually going to be expecting some sheep. I decided earlier this week that I'd get some sheep, kind of through talking with an, an old high school friend of mine. Long story short, I went to high school in Massachusetts. I'm from Connecticut. There's a girl, two uh, two girls, sisters that are that are from my hometown in Connecticut that we went to high school together in Massachusetts, and now one of them lives out near me in Oregon, which is kind of neat, and we keep in contact. And she called me earlier this week, and asked if I might know of anybody who wanted some Gotland sheep, and I said, well, you know, I might, and things went from there, <clears throat> and so today I'm actually cleaning up our barn to kind of prep for these two sheep and maybe a couple of more to come to the farm. So this is part and parcel. <laughs> it's generally better to have things more organized probably, but when things are worth it, it's sometimes a little fun to be sketchy <laughs> and a little disorganized until things come. So right now I'm actually going to be cleaning up our barn that hasn't been used in about four or five years. Um, we had horses here last, um, but we had sheep here oh about 10 15 years ago and that was my first flock of sheep and i just thought it'd be kind of nice to get some sheep back on the property again and so today's job in part is to clean up the barn to get these two sheep or maybe maybe um up to maybe up to four um but we'll see at least two um and so that entails seeing what i have here seeing what i need to get at the store but then also to kind of plan for the future because we're going to do a little different setup this time around for these sheep versus my other sheep that I had. And so uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you a little bit of what we had before. So this is our doorway into our barn that we have here. And it's not any great shakes, but it'll do for the time being until we can kind of build up. So we have this door here. And then, believe it or not, there's one over there in the weeds. And this door led out to our couple acre pasture, which is about, you can kind of see the, the grass that's grown. Um, and it's, it's a nice big pasture, but we need to divide it down a little bit to kind of divide and conquer. And so that's going to be part of the goal is to put up some electric fencing to kind of let the sheep graze out in rotational grazing to help kind of manage the, the pasture a little differently. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to kind of set up the stall so we can divide this up and um, use this area over here in the kind of back here. So I've planned out some things on my barn that I needed to update. And so I'm here at my local lumber yard. You can see I'm out by the, by the wood and stuff. And what I've done is in the back there, I have um, a four by eight foot or 50 inch by eight foot long um, piece of hog panel. And then I have three um, two by six by eight foot lengths of uh, lumber. And then I have a four by, so a 50 inch by four foot gate. Now you're saying, what the heck is this recipe for? Basically I am making one divider that's going to go in the in one section of my barn because I wanted to allow to have two stalls, potentially three stalls in my barn. And I wanted to have, I'm going to start out um, with keeping my two sheep separate because one's a ram and one's a ewe and they're uh, father and daughter. So we don't want to breed them at all <laughs> uh, for several reasons. Unless I realize there are some options to do what's called line breeding, but I'm just not a fan of that style of breeding. So I need to separate them for the time being. And so um, based on what I'm going to do with what I have back here, I also need to get some U nails and then some chain length uh, for another gate I have. So I'm going to go inside the store and I'm going to go get some other things. Um, but you can see that there's, and maybe even here, that there's someone else getting some other wood here. So I better move on down the line. I realized before I went inside, I wanted to just chat with you something about, about lumber. 
Um, some basic stuff about lumber that you might want to know if you're going to do something similar is realize that there's there's different flavors, so to speak. Um, in this case, we have a hemlock fir uh, treated deck board. Now, when you see like the hemlock fir, there's there's different types of trees that kind of can help do different things, and they last different uh, periods of time naturally. Treated simply means it's been pressure treated, so it lasts even longer, so it doesn't rot as easily. And in this case, this particular type of board is, they're saying would be good for a deck. And it's a two inch by two inch by eight foot length. So in this case, if we look at it, it it's got a little square end. So two by two by eight is, is the measurement. Um, so that's kind of what that is. So whenever you, whenever you look at something like this, um, there's uh, the most common side size is a two by four. So that's just this way by this way. And then the lengths will vary a lot. You can get them in eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 16 foot. In fact, I just saw one at 20 feet long. Um, but also there's so like this one's a two by two, there's two by fours, two by sixes, two by tens, I think is the long, is the widest that I've seen in this style lens. But we also have in some other places, um, plywood, CDL or CDX wood. And so some plywood that you might see come in sheets that are four foot by eight foot sheets. So you can see here that it's, let me see if I can help guide, four foot by eight foot is, is the kind of length that way. This one is longer than that. <laughs> so, no, actually it isn't. So this CC plywood, plug and tough sanded or touch sanded is a half inch by four foot by eight foot. So this is the, the half inch and then the four foot uh, is, let's see, this way, uh, that way. <laughs> and then the eight foot is that way. So this is looking longer on camera. But, so you can see that there's different types of wood that you would have to go get. Um, in my case, I'm not using any plywood today or even what's called, um, like a wafer board. Wafer board I would not suggest for outside. In my case, it's gonna be in a barn which has a lot of access to the moisture and stuff. So that's why I didn't wanna go with that. Um, so plywood for what I'm gonna use probably would be okay if you're gonna use something like that. But I wanted to have a gate that can be seen through. I wanted the animals to be able to see each other. But also I wanted to be, allow light into a space that's kind of dark. Um, and so these sheets down here wouldn't work for me for several reasons. But some, if you're gonna build your own barn, this would be great on the outside, the exterior of your barn or your whatever you're gonna build for animals. Um, and so keep in mind that too, how there's different things for different items. Now, the press, getting back to the pressure treated, I don't like to use pressure treated woods with animals only because um, they tend to bite on it. They tend to lick on it, you know, and for that reason, the pressure, the treated nature of that wood would, could harm my animals. And that's not what I want. And so that's why I try to look for the non treated kind. I have to renew it more often, but for the health of my animals, I'd rather that than have them get sick. So. That's something to keep in mind as well. Now that I'm back at my barn, I ended up cutting down one of my two by six by eight foot lengths of, of limb, lumber down to fit my gate. Now, because my my lumber is two, two, two inch by six inch by eight in feet long, I ended up having to accommodate on the short ends of my gate. And so, to accommodate the six inches on top and bottom, I cut my my other board down for the short ends 
down to it was just over three and a quarter inch or three and a quarter feet. So I accommodated that and I'm now going to lay out my supplies so I can kind of get an idea of how to put things together. So as I'm laying this out, you can see this is one length, that's the other, and that's one of the short sides. The other short side is going to be on the other side. So what I'm going to do now is take my hog paneling and lay it down and make sure that it's all good before I start putting things together. Now that I have my materials laid out, you can see that it's basically square with the wood, but there's extra of the gate or of the paneling. And basically I ended up cutting this piece here a little too short. And because I'm kind of needing to get this done in a bit of a hurry and um, I can't glue back on that wood, I'm just gonna accept that I can either put this paneling a little lower like that or have it a little higher up at the top. Now, if you might notice here that there's this space and that space grows as it goes up the paneling. And it's because this is considered the bottom of the panel and that's considered the top. And so to kind of accommodate that, I'm just gonna put it together like this and have this extra piece down here in case anything happens that the gate gets dug underneath, that I have a little extra down here. So with that in mind, I'm gonna move forward and essentially put braces on these corners on both sides and use U-bolts or U-nails on the sections of gate. Hey there, and welcome to Oregon in the winter. <laughs> it's now snowing after I've gotten my sheep come in and this is what they get to kind of get into. So I just thought I'd show you my little flock because I'm kind of excited and I'll introduce you to them. And um, we ended up having um, a little bit of a hiccup <laughs> with getting my gate done, but it got all kind of fixed and so it's doing its job. So I'll show you now kind of the sheep and my gate that I made. Let's go, let's go. You ready? Yeah. Girls? Girls? The girls. So we have in here the two boys. Hey boys, this is one and this is the other. They're both rather curious. And the big guy is Ferris Bueller. The little guy we haven't named just yet, but they, the little guy's a weather and Ferris is a ram and I've given them some hay that they've started tramping on, but then around the corner over here, we have the girls, and good job, girls. And so these are the girls, and this bigger girl over here is Petunia, and the little one is Ramen. And so I'm kind of excited about kind of what's going on, and... That gate is the gate that I was making, and it turned out okay. It ended up being a little rough, but um, it does the job for the time being. Um, and the dogs are kind of welcoming them the sheep in a way to say, hey, what's going on? And that's the thing about, that's Yarsan, and he's a lab that I got from China. But then I have my Australian shepherd, Piper, and her daughter, uh, Jinsa. And so they're doing their job. This is Piper. This is G.
doing so. And she's a Border Collie German Shepherd, or Border Collie Aussie Mix. And this is her mom. Hey, hey. And then that's Piper the Grey. And they, this is the first time that they've had their own uh, animals, so to speak. So we'll see how that pans out. So since it is snowing <laughs> and the sheep are kind of settling in, I thought I'd come down and check on them um, after they got here and every, they, got, they entered into their stalls. Um, so I thought I'd check on them and give them some water and grain and, the, and some hay um, and then leave them alone for a bit. And so hopefully uh, the ram will settle into his space and uh, realize that he should not be headbutting me or Gates. <laughs> but I hope this gives you a little bit of an insight into bringing animals to a farm and something that you might need to do. Like in my case, I had to do the gate and just how to set up things. Now, we already had this barn, so I just had to adjust it a little bit. But when you bring animals to your your location, farm or wherever you might have your animals, you do need to make sure that there's an appropriate setup for that animal. Like, you might not want to have the same setup for chickens as you would horses or sheep. Um, and I know I have to do a little bit more modification on where I am to kind of help with the sheep a little bit, but I have a little time now that I got them in the barn. So with that in mind, I hope this video is of some help to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe and tell your friends, family, relatives about the Traveling Homesteader in Gyroscope Farm. And I hope to see you again soon. So now it's dinner time for the, for the sheeps. And these are the boys. The big guy on the left is Ferris. And the little man on the right still has yet to have a name. So we'll see how that pans out. Hi, Ferris. How are you? And as a side note, hi, how are you, sir? As a side note, he may not be with us long for some actions that is not good. But today seems to be a good day. Hey, little girl. You just like camping out, huh? Yeah. Good girl. Good girl, littles. Hey, big girl. Sweet, sweet girl. How are you doing, Petunia? Yeah, good girl. Yeah. So nice to see you, Lidos. Yeah. Good girl. 